I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Good morning. How's it going? Welcome back along to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, part of, of course, the 90 Min family. Coming to you a little bit earlier in the day today because I wanted to catch the big news. David Ornstein has brought out a report linking Arsenal with one of Manchester City's Premier League title winners this season. Could the Gunners be about to go and sign a player from Manchester City again? That'll be the third in two seasons. Is this really going to happen? We'll discuss it briefly. We'll also bring you uh, some further updates from David Ornstein's piece in The Athletic this morning as well. Uh, but before we dive into it, if I could just ask you to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're brand spanking new. And if you're listening to us via audio, well, then please do leave us a review. It really, really does help. Um, so, yeah, surprising report this one for me. I know, you know, people have sort of made that link between Arsenal and Ilkay Gundogan over the past few weeks, just because of the fact that the German international's contract runs out at the end of the season. As far as everybody knows, no agreement has been reached between Manchester City and the midfielder with regards to him staying on for longer. Barcelona have been linked. A number of other clubs on the continent have been linked with him too. And um, it's interesting because this comes off the back of him having a really strong end into the season. All of the talk around Gundogan has been in recent weeks that this is a player that when it matters most, steps forward, steps up to the plate and um, and really is an asset to Pep Guardiola and everything that he wants to do. I thought the interview that he gave to Sky Sports after the game yesterday, when obviously the trophy celebrations were ongoing, was really, really interesting. He talked about the fact that he's been asked to play in different roles in that Manchester City midfield. He sort of discussed briefly the differences between playing in that deeper position and then the demands placed on him when he's pushed further up the pitch. He scores big, vital goals. He's been there, done it, won it all. Um, I think he's a fabulous player, but he is 32 years old. And I know that's not old in sort of the real world, but in the football world, that does kind of ring alarm bells for people. The only difference between this one and some of the others that we've been linked with. So, for example, we've been linked with João Cancelo over the course of the past few weeks. And my kind of reservation around that is not whether or not João Cancelo is good enough. I think he's a brilliant player. But the problem is, is that Bayern Munich, with whom he spent the second half of, of this season on loan, have got an option to buy clause for around about 60 million euros, which they don't necessarily want to activate, which suggests that that's the kind of ballpark figure that Manchester City will be looking for if they're going to sell him on. Maybe it won't be 60. Maybe it'll end up being 40 because they need to move him on. And there's been a breakdown in the relationship, obviously, between him and Pep Guardiola. And so, as I say, it's not a question around whether these players are good enough. It's around about whether you're able to make that investment. And it's around about making sure that you don't hinder yourself going into the transfer window, i.e. end up not being able to sign players in other key areas and in important positions because you've gone and, and pushed the boat out to get someone who maybe wasn't necessarily in your initial plans, but has kind of worked his way into them because of circumstance. With Ilkay Gundogan, I think this is circumstance. I think this is an opportunity that Arsenal and Mikel Arteta see to bring in a top quality player for basically what it will cost to pay him on a weekly basis. I'm sure there will be some sort of signing on fee involved, but you're not talking about 40, 50, 60 million pounds to bring this guy in. And it's why I'm less opposed to this one than I am to some of the others. Because as I say, I don't think this will hamstring us too much in terms of what we can go out and do in the rest of the window. We've talked a lot about Granit Xhaka potentially departing. A lot of people have pointed to the fact that he's 30 and therefore it's time to move on from him. Ilkay Gundogan is 32, but I think he's a player that plays the game with his brain more than anything else. And, you know, Andrea Pirlo once famously said, and I always refer to this, football is played in your head and your feet are the tools that you play it with. And I think Gundogan is someone who exemplifies that, who picks up intelligent positions knows when to get into the right areas. And particularly from an attacking sense, I think over the last couple of seasons has really, really developed. He's a winner. He's another winner that we would be adding to the squad. And we know that we fell a little bit short in terms of maybe mentality at the back end of this season. That's what a lot of people have suggested. I don't think it's as cut and dry as that. But if that is the problem you think Arsenal have, then bringing in Ilkay Gundogan would only help in that sense, you would feel. But there is a part of me that thinks we kind of need to build our own thing. And we need to stop looking 
at Manchester City and thinking we can sort of replicate the blueprint that Pep Guardiola has sort of carried out. Now, obviously, we're talking about top quality players. Obviously, Ilkay Gudawan is better than a lot of the options that we have at Arsenal Football Club. So in that sense, it would be an upgrade. But I always think Pep Guardiola knows when to let people go. He always understands when someone has maybe sort of given everything that they can at that football club. And it's very rare that somebody moves on from Manchester City, particularly since he took over and goes on to have a better career. He's very good at judging when the kind of end is here uh, for certain players within his setup. And he's been really good at regenerating this squad. OK, they've got a ton of money to spend. And OK, there are question marks around how they've been able to do that and manage that. But generally speaking, the players he's let go, he's been able to replace them with better ones. Now, there's no doubt about it. You know, people are talking about Jesus in the last couple of weeks. Is he not good enough? Has he not scored enough goals? Is he just that level below the elite category of striker? Maybe, but he's still a massive upgrade on what we had. And he's come in and I think overall had a very good season and made a big contribution. Zinchenko, question marks, obviously being asked about his defensive ability, but overall he's brought a lot to the team and he's been a big reason as to why we've been able to close that gap on Manchester City. So generally speaking, those two deals have worked out well, but they still weren't enough for us to close the gap completely. And Manchester City may have at some point or another thought they'd shot themselves in the foot by allowing those players to join Arsenal. But I think internally there was always that belief within Pep Guardiola and his staff that actually they, they'd done the right thing. They got the money in. There's a lot of scrutiny on City's finances at the moment. And so to bring in significant fees for a couple of players they feel they could do better on, it's probably not really um, an issue. But yeah, um, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Um, Ilkay Gundogan, Mikel Arteta said to be um, interested in uh, in making that move and, and said to be driving this. Um, whether we'll be able to get it over the line is, is another thing. Will Ilkay Gundogan want to stay in the Premier League? We're going to have to make him a big offer, I think, and we're going to have to promise him game time. At 32 years old, he isn't going to want to go somewhere and be a bit part player. It might be a bit like Zinchenko and a bit like Jesus, where you know they were kind of in and out of the team at City, but feel like if they move to Arsenal, they'll be regulars and that could extend their careers potentially. So, yeah, interesting one, this. Um, whether it happens or not, I don't know. Um, Again, there is a part of me that feels like we shouldn't be always looking to bring in players from Manchester City. We have to find a way of closing the gap without necessarily, um, you know, copying what they're doing and, and going after all their players that they're ready to move on. But they are the benchmark and, and they are the team that you'd be looking at in terms of aspiring to be them. So, you know, I can understand it. And I guess this one makes a bit more sense because it would be a free transfer. But we still need more. And um, and David Ornstein goes on to talk about a number of other subjects in this piece as well. He talked about the midfield being Arsenal's priority going into the summer. He repeated that Declan Rice uh, remains the main target. He scored yesterday, of course, against Leeds. And the more I see him getting into those advanced positions, the more I'm starting to believe that he could be a really good player for us in the eight, but also in the six. And that versatility, I think, is important. Uh, David Ornstein also went on to say that Arsenal are looking to add creativity and he referenced Mason Mount again, uh, who he says is a target. But there is strong competition, of course, from Liverpool and United. Chelsea also trying to work out a contract extension with him as well. But there is a line in that piece after the Rice and Mount bits where he says Arsenal are determined to sign both of these England internationals. He then talks about Xhaka potentially leaving and then takes it into the Gundogan piece as well. Um, but I guess we're going to have to see what happens. I think it's going to be a really busy summer. I think there are going to be lots of changes. Um, I think players that maybe we thought were going to be a part of Arsenal's future in the next three, four years could be on their way out. I mean, what does this mean for somebody like Emil Smith Rowe, you know, who's already found it very, very difficult to work his way back into contention after that injury? Um, Granite Xhaka, we think, is is headed for an exit. What does it mean? For somebody like Kieran Tierney, um, you know, with Arsenal looking to go into the transfer market again and Arsenal looking at a different profile of player to fill in that left back role. I mean, I thought the selection at the weekend was a big statement to Kieran Tierney to put Jakob Kivior at left back and Partey at right back instead of turning to the Scotland international says a lot, doesn't it? So it's going to be interesting to see how that develops as well. In other news, Arsenal, uh, according to this same piece, are 
desperately trying to keep hold of Ethan Waneri, who became the youngest player to play in the Premier League when Arteta brought him on at the start of the season away at Brentford. His schoolboy registration with the club finishes in June. And it's said that Chelsea, City and United are all working hard to try and sign him. I've seen quite a bit of him in the under-21s, covered a few games uh, of theirs this season and he, he looks great. Obviously, punching above his weight in under-21 football, let alone Premier League football, uh, given his age. Um, but he doesn't look out of place, looks very technically gifted, has a low centre of gravity, turns quite easily away from people and, and looks very mature. He kind of plays a little bit like Jack Wilshere did when he first broke into the team. I'm not comparing the two completely, but in terms of being sort of left-footed, low centre of gravity, always wanting to move the ball on quickly. Um, so in that sense, you know, there's there's a lot to be positive about. Hopefully his body can hold out uh, far better than Jack Wilshere's did. But, you know, that's an interesting one uh, that Arsenal are working on as well. But as I say, it's going to be a big old summer for Arsenal um, and we're going to have to make sure that we're keeping across all of these stories over the duration of the transfer window because I'm sure there'll be plenty. I'm sure there'll be plenty of developments. I think there'll be some surprise incomings and I think there'll be some surprise outgoings as well. Um, Mikel Arteta has, has talked about the fact that Arsenal need to nail this summer. And um, and I think that's true. You know, we've we've closed the gap to a point. But, you know, when you win two of your last eight in the Premier League, which I think it is off the top of my head, that's not that's not good enough. And, and it shows that we were unable to sustain the pace that we'd set ourselves. And we were unable to hold off Manchester City, who just were basically perfect in the last three months of the season or whatever it was. So, you know, there's signs that we've improved, but there's also still a lot more work to be done. And, you know, it's it's dependent on on KSE for me now. You know, how far do they want to go with this? Are they content with just being back in the Champions League, which is something they've been accused of in the past? Or are they really um, looking at things differently now? And are they wanting to push Arsenal on? Their investment is going to be key this summer because without it, Arsenal will probably fall short again. And in a different landscape, you know, there is a chance that they don't end up finishing second next season. And that means that has there been any progress? You know, they've got to maintain first. Before you progress, you have to maintain. You have to make sure that your base level remains the same from which you can push on. If, if you don't do that at the minimum, you can easily fall away. And I think, you know, there's a lot of things that have gone wrong at the back end of the season. There's been a lot of learning curves. I think, you know, there's um, there's a lot of things we can take away. There's a lot of things that the players need to do better, that the manager needs to do better. I think in hindsight, looking at the January window, maybe had we gone that little bit further in terms of what we've done, we might not have had this fall off in the way that we have, but that's easy to say with hindsight. I think at the time we all thought it was sensible and, and pretty strong business, but that's uh, that's the latest. Uh, Arsenal are trying to sign Man City captain Ilkay Gundogan. According to David Ornstein, Arteta wants him if Xhaka goes, which looks likely. City are apparently trying to hold on to him. Um, and there are other clubs circling as well. But the Gunners are very much much in the mix, according to this report. Declan Rice remains the priority. Mason Mount is someone of interest to the Gunners as well. And then, of course, uh, the Gunners still working hard behind the scenes to try and keep hold of Ethan Waneri. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this bonus edition of the podcast, a very short edition, uh, but wanted to get this one out nice and promptly, uh, share some thoughts and views on uh, these stories today. And we'll be back uh, tomorrow with another edition of the show. Make sure you're liking the video, subscribing to the channel. Uh, make sure uh, you uh, you leave us a review if you're listening on audio and check out NordVPN as well for added protection online and for the ability to change your geolocation and open all sorts of doors. Visit nordvpn.com forward slash Chronicles AFC. If you sign up now, you'll get a huge discount on your plan, but you'll also get four additional months for free. Uh, and we thank them for their support, of course, of the podcast. nordvpn.com forward slash Chronicles AFC. And we'll see you soon. All the best. Goodbye. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon.